moving on uh housing which is really close to my heart especially when i'm going through uh with a homes guarantee basically adopting the housing first model housing, housing first, first is actually a great model out of out of uh finland they're actually having a housing first model that they implemented which has having overwhelming success that i would love to see um and one of my favorite things i saw y'all this one eliminate credit checks from rental applications y'all i flip out when i saw this i said self did she just listen to those of us who are renting because look those of us, those people who know when you have to apply to rent for a place sometimes you have the you have the income you have no criminal history you've done pretty well as far as your rental history goes but once that credit check comes back if it is not in your favor you do not get it and then you spent all that money on that application fee that 40 50 60 70 dollar application fee per person per apartment and then if you don't get it you lose that on that application fee and you don't get the place all because your credit check didn't come out come back good it's wild so i yeah. honestly think that that's a great idea no more credit checks no man <laughs> dr stein uh, I would say from my own personal experience, actually, before I do that, what is your overall opinion about Dr. Stein's policy before I get into my opinion? Wow. Um, you know, um, coming onto the show, you, you asked me to review it because I hadn't had a chance to review it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been collecting signatures all day. Um, and um, so I did scroll through it, you know, to kind of get the bullet points of it um before this interview um and you know I, I i said to you it's probably a lot of the things that are in the green party's platform itself and i i think that's true you know i think she, her some of the the details are a little bit more fleshed out and um it's really strong stuff in there right mm -hmm. um like people ask well what's her policy you know and it's like wow she's got it um so I was very impressed with what I saw there. Um, it's it, it's based on her. She's used this, you know, kind of consistently in her campaigning. Um, that her campaign and the Green Party is about people, planet, and peace over profit, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, it really it's uh, it's an excellent platform, and I encourage everybody to go out there and check it out. Um, okay. I'll be looking at it more. Uh, because when I go out and canvas and, you know, getting petition signatures or whatever, you know, I try um, and, you know, to share some of the things in the platforms of the Green Party and in Jill's platform, you know, with some of our views on things that I do know. Um, and people are blown away. You know, I, I was, you know, explaining to somebody, hey, the Green Party is the only party that actually stands for reparations in its platform and land back for Indigenous Americans. Right. Yeah. We believe in making things whole for people that have been abused and um, taken advantage of by the system. Right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, it, it, when people hear that, they're 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 honestly, truly blown away that there's this thing called the Green Party and it has those things in its platform. And yeah, so Jill's platform is phenomenal <laughs> from what I've seen. It's um, I need to dig into it more. But um you know um a couple of the things i saw there uh the workers uh bill of rights that's something she's been campaigning on since i think 2012 right yeah. um she's talking about a green new deal again but she's saying it's the real green new deal right yeah. um uh, because the the democrats you know basically borrowed that terminology from her bernie did mm -hmm. and um you know she'd been running on it in the past before him um and they watered it down. So um, a Green New Deal with, you know, demilitarization and using those funds to, to really um, 
you know, build housing here, <laughs> you know, and give living wage jobs to everybody. It's also a jobs program. Um, so yeah, um, those are just a couple of my thoughts on it from my, my quick review of it, but it looks fantastic and I got to dig into it more. Okay. Well, one of my uh, initial opinions after going through, going over it line by line really, was that this is actually more comprehensive than Bernie Sanders was in 2020. And oh, yeah, if you definitely. remember back in 2020, Bernie Sanders, his policy platform was pretty much one of the most comprehensive out of all of the 2020 candidates. Jill Steins actually goes far and above uh, this, you know, what Bernie Sanders had. Uh, it is further more progressive and it's more inclusive, I would like to say. Uh, and so one of the things that I want to do is actually, I just want to get into it. Um, and so let me see here. So the platform is people planet in peace, but once you go into the platform for people, that's when it drops down and it's massive. So mm -hmm. this is the part where it's really uh this one is really about like very worker centric in my mind uh so yep. first off here it says uh guarantee lifelong public education for all institutions of learning including trade schools and pre-k through college and graduate school first of all she just smacked us in the face with basically graduate school for all <laughs> yeah yeah and we can we can fund that if we're not spending money on Israel and Ukraine that's and the military industrial complex. Yeah. Um, and then abolish student debt for 43 million encumbered Americans. Um, you know, of course, Joe Biden really dropped the ball on that one. He could have uh, implemented the Higher Education Act when he had the chance. He did not take the chance because he does not want to. And so Jill Stein really is trying to run with that. Um, one of the other things that I also uh, would like to see is reduce taxes on incomes below the real median income of $75,000 per household. Yeah, reducing taxes. Republicans are going to love that too, right? People, people that are, you know, traditionally conservative or to the right mm -hmm. love reductions in taxes, right? Yeah. And we're talking reductions of class for the 99%. Yeah. And so, and, and, and this is for the most of us, you know. Um, and then this one, I think, also is uh, something that a lot of people would, uh, especially those people who are in within my tax bracket, guarantee affordable, efficient utilities through a transition of all utilities to public, not for profit ownership. So Beautiful. your light bill will go down, essentially. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if it's in this section too, right? Um, it talks about uh, basically forming um, tenants unions and stuff like that, tenants rights. Um, and um, it might be in another section where it talks about um, housing and everything. Um, also, uh, it, maybe it's in this next section, uh, I see just peeking there, labor um, mm -hmm. section, where it really goes into um, pushing for um, worker co-ops and investment yeah. um, in worker co-ops. Um, and also another big thing there is it talks about public banking and, uh, yeah. you know, making the, the too big to fail banks, um, public banks, um, you know, and mm -hmm. taking, you know, getting rid of the private ownership of those banks. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll let you uh, keep going, JB. Yeah. So she talks about a $25 minimum wage. But it says index to cost inflation and productivity growth, whichever is higher, with special consideration for geographic locations where cost of living greatly exceeds other areas. So it's basically saying everybody who is, if you're in a poor area, if you're in a poorer state, $25 minimum wage. If you're in, let's say, the states like Hawaii or California or Colorado, Florida, New York, right? It's going to be higher than $25, but it's going to be also indexed to cost of inflation. So 
you know, you will have what is a living wage according to, excuse me, according to the cost of, uh, you know, inflation. Um, universal rent control is something that I think would also impress a lot of people who are like myself because rent is out of control. And really the, the, the landlords have been given the keys to the car and they are running it into the river. And so this is what we see right now as far as rents. Rents are sky high. The rent is too damn high, as they say. So, yeah. Um, so one of the things I also wanted to go into was pass a federal jobs guarantee. So this is huge. And I'll, I want to explain to people why a federal jobs guarantee is so massive. So all the people who are proponents of, of MMT, modern monetary theory, they push what's called a federal jobs guarantee. Now, federal jobs guarantee is essentially that if you are out of a job, the federal government will give you a job. And that job, when it comes to the wages, will be set at a certain level where it is a living, thriving wage, right? Until you can get a job at a private company. So, that federal jobs guarantee means that you, even though you may not have a job in the private sector, you will be employed by the government until you can get a job in the private sector once again. So therefore, this greatly depresses the amount of unemployed people and then keeps people employed so that their money, their income never runs out. And this is a win really for everyone. Now, a lot of conservatives will say, but the government is competing against private businesses. And that's when I go, well, I guess private businesses need to step their game up then, wouldn't they? Seriously, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you can't cut the mustard, because the thing is, here, here's, my, here's my biggest issue. A lot of times private business, because they'll say, well, private business will have to compete with the government. That's not fair. My thing is you guys have had what since the beginning of this country in order to be you know uh to keep people employed and to you know grow your businesses and and pay people a, a living wage you guys had ample opportunity to do that you haven't done it at all whatsoever and so now that you know we're saying that maybe the government should get involved into this now you guys want to call, cry foul like, no, 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 no. You, y'all had ample opportunity to do that, especially a lot of these big corporations. No more. You don't, you don't get that chance anymore because you had chance after chance after chance after chance. It's like, when, how many people are going to die and starve before we actually allow the government to intervene so that people stop dying and starving? I mean, what's the purpose of government in the first place? You know. I mean, I mean, the purpose of this government, right, <laughs> is to um, look out for who is who's who who owns it, right? I mean, um, you know, APAC and all these lobbyists, you know, they they own our government, <laughs> um, yeah. and it's not it's the purpose of the government is not to to help the people in this in this day and age. So, um, yeah. but no, it's really interesting, um, and that federal jobs program that is part of the Green New Deal. The real yeah. Green New Deal, right? Green Party Green New Deal. So this part is one that I was, I was impressed with because this one is new. It says create a national solidarity fund funded by yes. 1% per worker hour tax, paying stipends to workers who are striking or locked out. This is huge. So if you are in it's, a union. It's, sorry, no, it's like, um, um, when people say that we don't have, uh, you know, a labor party in the U.S. And that, you know, we don't have a socialist party in the U.S. or, you know, a party for the people, you know, I'm like, no, the Green Party. You do have it. It's here in the Green Party. Now, granted, this is Jill Science platform, mm -hmm. right? It's not the Green Party's platform, but... I mean, this is something that we could adopt for sure easily, right? <laughs> Especially, you know, our presidential candidates running on it. 
I mean, that's brilliant, though, um, mm -hmm. to create a fund through a, a, a very small tax to ensure that strikers will not go hungry. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, can you, can you, is there anybody else out there with a, a platform comparable to that in, in the benefit to workers? You know, it's so the, the Labor Party is here, it's the Green Party. Yeah, it's like, for instance, uh, does RK Jr. have part of that on his platform where he's willing to do a solidarity fund, a uh, a solidarity fund for workers so that they will never have to it, it essentially raise, even raise money for striking workers? It's basically taking the the quality of mutual aid and putting it at a federal level. It's it federal. amazing. Federal mutual aid, basically. Federal mutual aid is what we're talking about. Exactly. And, um, you know, another thing that's there in the platform, if you can go back to it, J.D., is mm -hmm. um, it talks about somewhere where she will veto any new legislation. It's a veto promise on any new legislation that will break a strike. Well, uh, somebody should like you know that. give that memo, send that memo to Joe Biden because I mean you look what he did with the uh, the right, workers, strike. workers, you know I mean he just basically broke their sh strike because he wants to appeal to the corporations instead of actually to workers. Yep. Yep. Uh, so moving on, uh, housing, which is really close to my heart, especially when I'm going through. Uh, with a homes guarantee, basically adopting the housing first model. Housing, housing first, first is actually a great model out of out of uh, Finland. They're actually having a housing first model that they implemented, which has having overwhelming success that I would love to see. Um, and one of my favorite things I saw, y'all, this one. Eliminate credit checks from rental applications. Y'all, I flip out when I saw this. I said, self, did she just listen to those of us who are renting? Because look, those of us, those people who know, when you have to apply to rent for a place, sometimes you have the you have the income. You have no criminal history. You've done pretty well as far as your rental history goes. But once that credit check comes back, if it is not in your favor, you do not get it. And then you spent all that money on that application fee, that $40, $50, $60, $70 dollar application fee per person, per apartment. And then if you don't get it, you lose that on that application fee and you don't get the place. All because your credit check didn't come out, come back good. It's wild. So I yeah. honestly think that that's a great idea. No more credit checks. No. Man. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. I do hope everybody checks out the whole platform. And on top of that, you know, just want to stress too, the Green Party platform it itself is great. And if you haven't taken a look through that, I highly recommend it. I highly encourage it. There's there's a, a lot of overlap, no doubt. Jill, I mean, from what I've seen, Jill has a dynamite platform, though, um, that we should pick up some of that stuff into the Green Party platform. But seriously, you know, we have a, a fantastic presidential candidate. We have a party with a platform for the people. I mean, if I've always said this, too. If, if people join the Green Party, and Jill Stein's campaign, like we did for Bernie in 2016, it would be a huge chance for us to really break through this system, right, and get some substantial change. Um, and um, I did want to touch on a couple things again before I have to go. Um, sure. You know, that whole synthesis and um, um, uh, I'm blanking on the term. Um, the interconnectedness. Um, intersectionality. What's that? Intersectionality, yes. Yeah. Of, um, you know, ballot initiatives with candidates, with mm -hmm. protests in the street. I mean, so I want to see, I would love to see more of our 
protest leaders stepping up to run for office on the issue that they are working on, right? And follow it up with a referendum, right? So it's this is like a three-pronged press, right? You got people out in the streets, you got the, the referendum or ballot initiative on the thing that they're fighting for, and they're running for office. So it's a three-pronged attack on the people that are holding power that are opposing this change that needs to happen, right? That the people are demanding. And if people get organized behind those three things, and they can do it at the same time, essentially, I mean, you'll, we'll be electing people. We'll be mm -hmm. passing these initiatives. And yeah. it's like, it, it, we will, like, people do have the power to do this. And so I'm talking elections at the, the municipal level, the local level, right? Um, for for um, the school board, for um, city and town council, right? Um, and Green parties, you know, candidates do win those races. We do all mm -hmm. the time. In Maine, we have anywhere from 65 to 100 people serving in municipal offices throughout maine right it's, mm -hmm. it's different in every state um but um the other thing too is in order for us to do better in these campaigns and in order for jill stein to do better right so first of all the people that say jill stein cannot win it is absolutely crap because she's going to be on the ballot to win in two at 270 electoral college votes at least you know she will meet that threshold that you know you need to get for electoral college votes to win the presidency so by that alone it is possible for her to win the election and in i i i wish i i should have shared this map with you jb to show but it's like um if did not vote were a candidate in 2016 did not vote you know and say it was did not vote Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were the candidates on the ballot in 2016. Did did not vote would have won 471 electoral college votes, wow. and Clinton won like 50 and Trump won 20 or something like that. Wow! It's it it is the if people that did not vote had voted for Jill Stein in 2016, she would have been president, not Trump. Right? Wow. Landslide victory. So if Jill has the access. To get the, at least 270 votes, she can win. That That is a flat out fact. Um, so it's up to us, again, like, you know, this this group of people that support Bernie, can we do it again, right? And this time, because Gaza is at stake, Palestine is at stake, um, you know, these other genocides, ending these wars, it, it it's all on the line. Um, and I really do think, again, we need, like, the more people we have in the Green Party, the more candidates we can run. And again, I'm talking like the, the multiple prongs, right? The, the activism in the streets, the referendum, and the candidate. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so we want municipal level offices for like city council, town council, school board. We want state level for state representatives, state legislature, because when we pass a ballot initiative, a lot of times the state legislature could overrule it or you know kind of do nefarious things with it right so you know we passed this referendum but the the state legislature just you know bombed it you know and they'll do that all the time because we yeah. don't have representatives there for us so yeah. we need to get people in at that level and yeah. if and then you talk about federal level for congress we want to get people into congress with the green party because they can actually stop this spending on these foreign wars Right. People say, well, Jill Stein, what's she going to do? She gets elected. She she's just the president. She's got a hostile Congress. Well, we want to take over Congress, too. Right. Or at least get five Greens elected to Congress. And we have I, I this is the kind of the last point I wanted to make here. We have some amazing Greens running for Congress, for federal level Congress in this election cycle. And um, and again, if we have candidates at working at all these levels on the ballot, you know, for again, the smaller level offices, but then the federal level offices, and then Jill's running at the president at the top. If every single one of those is running and every, like each campaign, they're gonna have people knocking on doors saying, hey, I need to vote for my my candidate for, for town council, but hey, also we got so-and-so running for state rep, so-and-so running for uh, 
House and we got Jill Stein. You need to vote for all of them because, you know, together all those things with this platform, what we're trying to do, and we got this ballot initiative, we're going to make some significant change for all our, all our lives. So I think the synergistic, like intersectional kind of campaigning. And um, again, I mentioned the fact that we got a lot of great congressional candidates. And that's one thing I'm working on right now is actually I'm with the what's called the um, the Green Congressional Campaign Committee. Um, mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll be putting out some social media soon on that. And um, that's going to basically be talking about the federal level, the U.S. House, U.S. Senate candidates. Okay. And um, I'll name just a, a handful, right? I don't know them all yet, and we need to do more with all of them. Uh, but Jason Call, right, who's also the campaign manager for Jill Stein, you got Christina Khalil down in, and please, if if you're watching this, any of my uh, federal level candidates, and I don't mention your name, please forgive me. Um, we got Christina Khalil running for U.S. Senate against Bob Menendez. We got... Um, um, uh, Michael um, uh, Dublin down in North Carolina for U.S. House. Okay. Um, the uh, we got Shibu Osonye uh, for U.S. House in Illinois. Uh, something amazing, JB. Um, so last night, um, Sabi actually interviewed uh, Shibu Osonye, who's fantastic, a, a millennial running for U.S. House in Illinois as a green. Um, and Christina Khalil, who's running for the U.S. Senate race there. Um, so they were on Savvy last with Savvy last night in New Jersey, where Christina is running for Senate. They have tw they have 12 U.S. House districts in New Jersey, and they have a candidate for each of those U.S. House districts and the U.S. Senate race in New Jersey. They're calling it the New Jersey 13, and the Green Party has never done that. Wow. Never ever done that we have 13 candidates on the ballot in new jersey if if new if we focus on new jersey alone it, we we shouldn't do that but but imagine if if we really organized to get everybody elected in new jersey as a green you know christina and all the 12 candidates um and there's some amazing people there um it, it would be a game changer in Congress, right? You know, the mm -hmm. idea of like the squad, they could have done, they could have demanded, um, you know, a bill on, on Medicare for all, right? On a single payer healthcare, mm -hmm. but they didn't use their leverage of power. And again, a small voting block like that could, could do tremendous things for the Speaker of the House vote. True. You know, True. it's so we have a lot of power if we do take it right if we do step up and again i really encourage us all to think i'm because i love roger meadows and he's really focused on ballot initiatives but i think we need to do the whole thing right and okay. organize again with this three-prong attack and um i think we'll make some huge gains and again um one last thing i also wanted to shout out um the person that uh got me onto this uh, jb you put out a a tweet saying uh, who are some people i should interview you know um, oh yeah and really cool young guy um his name's brody um on uh, twitter it's greenway forward um he recommended me um he'd done an interview with me and um i'll tell you what it's it's really cool seeing people like brody out there you know i i think i think he's 17 and he's gonna turn 18 so this will be his first election and he is on fire he, he was wow. a Democrat. He was for Bernie, right? But I, I think he even, like, voted for Biden, you know? And um, he's like, I am so there for, for Jill Stein and the Green Party now. And um, so Brody recommended me to be on here with you. I'm so grateful that we had the chance to talk. And um, I don't know, did you want to say any last things there? Uh, I, I do have to get in line for this to catch the ferry um, to get over to Connecticut here. No, no, I, I think that uh, everything you said was spot on. And as far as, you know, uh, as far as doing what we can for different uh, in, uh, third parties and independents, I think we need to pull out all the stops as much as we can. That's just a small piece of the multi-pronged approach that you were talking about, like getting out into the streets, doing mutual aid, organizing, things like that. I'm a big proponent of doing the organizing, things like that. And then 
also it's like, oh yeah, this person who's running on all these great things. Okay, I'm gonna take that Tuesday, stand in line, you know, fill the bubbles in, and then get back out there and start organizing again in the streets and doing mutual aid. So I'm a fan of that. So yeah, definitely. So yeah. JB, I'm really honored to be here with you. And thank you for having me on. I know it took a little time to get us to find the right time to be on, but thank you so much. Yeah, and thank you so much for coming on. I can't wait to have you back on. We'll have we'll have you back on to talk about some news stories as well, because I, I would like to get your perspective on some of the things that's happening both uh, around the world and also here domestically too. They so appreciate it. Um, you know, it's um, a lot of people, um, I've noticed in interviews and things, um, a lot of people think they know what the Green Party's about or whatever. I think it's it's, I think it's helpful sometimes to have a Green Party person with Green Party perspective on sure. the shows that, you know, um, I mean, we are, we're very much in line if, if, we, if we just had a chance to talk with each other, you know, and um, mm -hmm. the Green Party, even though we're, we're kind of crazy about our candidates, right, and doing that thing, you know, we, yeah. we're so much more. And um, so I think um, getting to know people, you know, getting to know each other is important. And... Mm -hmm. um, I'm uh, really grateful again, JB, and um, uh, sending you best wishes on everything you're going through there with your housing situation, right? Um, and um, I'm hoping something works out for you, really. Oh, thank you so much. That means the most to me. I appreciate it very much. And I wish you much success. Uh, I I hope you get uh, 45,000 more signatures by yourself in two days. <laughs> <laughs> That's not gonna happen. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, burnt. <laughs> but, hey, hey, hey! We can wish upon the star. You know, it, we <laughs> we may not get the stars, we might catch the moon. You know, so. Uh, All right, JB. Really, really, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Justin. You have yourself a great one. I'll talk to you on Twitter. As well. Okay. Take care. All right. Bye bye. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.